Hey everyone, this is a look at my family dashboard that I made. It has everything that we need from a unified look at all of our calendars, our family to-do list, the upcoming weather, and news headlines. So starting off with the TV, I'm using the TCL 43 inch 4K TV. And the reason why I went with this one is because I already use TCL TVs, so I know that the picture quality is pretty good. Plus, I didn't want something as small as a 32 inch or something as large as say a 55 inch. Plus this 43 inch is a pretty good bargain when you can find it still in stock. This particular wall mount that I'm using is pretty nice. However, I'm not sure I would go with it again if I were to start over. One thing I like about it is that I can pull it out from the wall and tilt it and angle it so that way if I were to watch television, I could watch it from pretty much any room within the house. The only thing I don't like about it is that it does make it protrude quite a bit from the wall. And the LED lights behind the TV are these Treat Life Smart LED lights. Now this is the one part of the build I can't recommend. They have some pretty cool features built into them, like a scheduling feature that allows you to turn them off at night and turn them on in the morning. However, to be honest, most of the time this feature doesn't work. So we'll have to see if these lights stick around for version 2.0 or if I go to something else. Now one good thing about these LED lights is they are long enough to go around your television almost twice. And if you're worried about soldering or bending the cables when you go around the corners, you can always get these LED light connectors to help with 90 degree angles. Now for this build, I didn't want any cable showing and I didn't want to use any cable ramps. So I routed some power cables from an outlet down below up to the television and to the sound bar. Okay, let's pause here for one really important lesson that I learned. So originally I was gonna use this gang box here. However, I figured out that a recessed gang box is gonna be better. Plus I kind of hate this gang box. This one gives me a lot more room to work with. Now the only issue is there's a little bit of gap here on top and bottom of where the old gang box was. But when I put the frame on, you can't really tell, plus the speaker will cover it anyways. One other issue is the original mounting screw for the speaker was here, but I'll move it a little bit further to the left. I have an idea to make sure it doesn't look too off-centered. We'll go over that here in a minute. Also, I like these gang boxes a lot more because of the way that it mounts. It just squeezes onto the drywall rather than you having to drill it into the stud. So I'll go and replace the top one and show you how I did it. One of the first problems I ran into originally though was I wanted to have the sound bar mounted in the center of the television. However, since I had to use a different outlet, I had to move the sound bar a little further to the left because of the location of the stud. And so to help give the television and sound bar a bit more of a balanced look, I actually mounted the remote on some magnets and a metal plate to the right of the sound bar. It's not perfect, but Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Now the power cord that came with the sound bar was way too long. It was something like three feet when I only needed a few inches. So I cut it and actually soldered on a 90 degree end to help keep a more slim profile to it. I also ran a pass through outlet to allow the audio cable from the television down to the sound bar. And on the back of the TV, I mounted this power strip because it has three outlets and four USB ports on it. This allows me to connect to Google TV and the Raspberry Pi, as well as power the television itself and the LED lights while only needing to connect the power strip to the wall outlet. So if you want to set up a family dashboard yourself, you can always just use a Google TV with a software called Dackboard. Now this is something you have to pay for. It's really easy to set up, but it is kind of limited to what you can do. So for myself, I went with a Raspberry Pi and used a software called Magic Mirror. Now I was a little intimidated to get this started myself because I've never used a Raspberry Pi. I don't know how to code anything, nothing like that. But it was a lot easier to get started than I thought. 
and I'll have a link down below to a detailed guide on my website, as well as a Reddit page where you can post any comments or questions that you might have, and hopefully I can help you out. But just a quick overview for anyone doing this for the first time. What you want to do is you want to get a micro SD card, preferably at least 32 gigs, and you're going to flash the Raspberry Pi operating system on there. And then once you power on your Raspberry Pi and get it all set up, you're going to download the Magic Mirror software. And on their website, there's a pretty good detailed step-by-step -step guide on what to do. And from there, you can customize it to your liking. You can add what they call modules or move the modules to different positions, change their size, and things like that. Like for myself, since I didn't want a black background, I actually added a module called Wallpaper which allows me to have different photos change every six hours or so instead of just a plain black background that you would want if you were to have this behind a two-way mirror, which is what this is really designed for. And from there, you're pretty much good to go. It's really easy to set up and you can probably have it done in less than an hour. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this build. It's only version one, so I'm certain there's gonna be changes in the future. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.